as day. Let me wrap this up. I'll give you a chance to ask some questions. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, the Bible says this. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another. God wants all the glory because he deserves it. Angels seek no glory. Angels seek no prestige. God deserves all the glory. Let your life be a vehicle through which God is glorified. Let your life be a stage on which God performs a one-man play. And you're standing in the wings just enjoying the fact that God is getting all the attention. Any decision you make, your boyfriend, girlfriend, when I finish, where will I go work? United States, Malaysia, Dubai, Will this be for the glory of God? If you think like this, your life will be a blessed path. You will not always be 18 or 19 as you are. Before you blink, you'll be 38. And you'll be looking back saying, I wish I had done this or that or that. You can avoid that by making <coughs> correct decisions now. And the number one correct decision you can make is to be determined that in every choice you make, the glory of God is your first and highest concern. Ask me some questions. Why are you thinking of questions? Look for God in engineering. Look for God in English. Look for God in biology. Why do I say that? Proverbs 1, 7, Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord, finish the verse, is the beginning of knowledge. Whatever branch of knowledge you pursue, look for God. He is the originator of knowledge. Accounting, he came up with a tithing system. That's accounting. That's his, that's yours. Zoology, he made all the animals. Botany, he made the plants. Ichthyology, he made the fish. Astronomy, he made the heavenly bodies. Whatever you study, oceanography, he made the oceans. Parasitology, he made the little things, but they were nice back then. They didn't cause sickness or anything of the kind. You name it. God made it. And so your first motivation when you choose an area, yes, the glory of God, but you are on the search for God, not a greed. <clears throat> The grave will come because God will see to it. But you are on the search for God. Why? Because accounting begins with God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of accounting. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of history. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of English. And so a study of English must be a search for God. Think like that. And then you don't become worried about grades. Because when you search for God, he said, you will find me. Amen. Whatever your branch of learning, look for God. Especially in the sciences. Ask God, why do we have two lungs and not one big one? Why one mouth and two ears? Why are animals this way and human beings are that way? Why does a heart have four chambers? How can that help me understand you? Ask these questions as you study. Let your study be a search for God. And the intellectual side will come. In first, uh, Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 1, page 34, paragraph 2, Ellen White Wright. As in the case of Daniel, in exact proportion as the spiritual character is developed, the intellectual capabilities are increased. Meaning, what she's saying is this, as you grow spiritually, you grow intellectually. Because intellectual growth, spiritual growth, have the same source. What source is that? God. Now ask me some questions quickly. Yes, Vladimir. Uh, my question is... That's not a German name. It's a Russian name. Ah, okay. Go ahead, Vladimir. 
uh, is it possible mm -hmm. to begin something with a wrong motive and turn it into a right motive? Yes, that's called repentance. <laughs> yes, that was something you need to do. Yes, you realize. That's why God is so loving and kind and patient and tolerant. He may wait 40 years for you to realize you need to change your motive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul had a lot of energy and zeal, but he had a wrong motive. God just redirected his motive. And he used that zeal to win souls, not kill them. Yes, Vladimir, very good question. Yes, my good brother. What's your name? Edward. Edward. Hi, Edward. Does it mean we have to change our court? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Change the motive. Ask God. Ask God. I tell my friends, pray about everything. Amen. I was talking last night on uh, Skype to a friend of mine in Namibia. I said, what are you wearing for work tomorrow? Have you prayed? She said, no. I said, pray. Let God choose the shirt, the blouse, whatever, and wear what you can Ask God. Don't dress to change a man's mind or his head or the direction of his travel. Dress to glorify God. Pray. And I said, when you pray, follow conviction, not self. And so you may not have to change your course, but God may want you to change your course. He may want you. <coughs> you may choose medicine because people call you doctor. God may want you to be a literature evangelist. But nobody admires literary evangelists. Well, that's not prestigious. If you tell your parents you want to be a literary evangelist, they put you out of the house. <laughs> you tell them I want to be a doctor, or they tell the whole village. And so, but God <laughs> may want you to be a literature evangelist, or a carpenter like Jesus, <clears throat> or a doctor like Luke. Ask him. And while you're waiting, continue what you're doing. Do the best you can as God directs your path. But once his glory becomes your number one concern, you guarantee divine guidance. Somebody else, question. Outside, question, come. Inside, <laughs> outside. Intelligent people ask questions. All intelligent people raise your hand. Can I speak? No, only me? Okay, all right. Okay. All good looking people raise your hand. Only me again. Okay, all right, okay, all right. All rich people. Question, come on, ask me a question. I didn't come to have you stare at me, ask me a question. Ask me about your studies. How are you doing? Why are you not passing this class? Yes. Like in my, in my, Goldie? Um, yes. All right. In my course. It's Which course is that? English. English, okay. It's all literature, literature. Literature, literature, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, we basically study like uh, the backgrounds of writers. Of I know. Mm -hmm. How how can I uh, how can I find God there? Well, okay, good question. There are two kinds of writing. There's a writing that leads you to God. A writing leads you away from God. There's no middle ground, by the way. There is no middle ground in the Bible. It either helps you or it hurts you. It's either blessing or curse. There is no middle ground in the Bible. Now, when you study those writings, whatever, you can study the sentence structure. You can study uh, the, the style of writing, not necessarily the substance. Because those great writers, they are great, not just because of what they said, but how they said it. And then you learn from that style so you can write a biblical article. So you can write something as an English teacher for little children in the Sabbath school class. So you can write maybe Bible study lessons for people to understand. So you can explain what the Adventist Church believes in clear language. So you extract from that. For instance, I don't know why I said we should, well, you don't know what. Have you heard of the book Common Sense by Thomas Paine? No, no, forget it. Okay. But she counseled and don't read the book. <coughs> don't read it. But it's a famous book you don't understand. If you've never heard of Common Sense in the U.S., you haven't heard anything. So you look, ask, Father, what can I take from this? Because when Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah were taken to Babylon, in verse 4 the Bible says, of chapter 1 of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar wanted children who, in whom are well favored, without blemish, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. They had to learn all that stuff, Babylonian stuff. But their foundation was the Hebrew education. They took what was good 
That's the bad. So you try to do the same with the guidance of the Spirit of God. Someone else? Yes. And your name is? Who? Shane. Hello, Sister Shane. What's your question? Um, there are a lot, um, I know a lot of people basically it's true for a lot of people, you know, their parents choose their course for them. Uh -huh. and as much as they want to change course, they basically have no choice. Okay, okay. And I understand that. And I don't want to start a civil war. I understand me very carefully. But you pray to God. You see, God can change the mind of your parents. God can't change your parents' minds? Um, my friends' parents. Well, your friends' parents. He can do, listen, listen to this verse, Proverbs 21, verse 1. Listen carefully. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us or ever he will. Now, let's examine that verse. The king in the universe, that's God. The king on earth is a little king. The Bible is saying the universal king can take the heart of an earthly king and make him do whatever he wants. You say to God, Father, I am convicted I should study Bible, be a Bible worker. My parents want me to be an anesthesiologist so they can brag to their friends. You touch the hearts of my parents, if it is your will, and change the attitude that I may do what I'm convicted to do. If God doesn't do that, proceed with what they want you to do. When you're done, go do what you want to do. <coughs> then you have two preparations. Are you with me? We must honor our parents, but your first parent is God. So you must be wise as a servant, harmless as love. Your father wants you to do medicine. Okay, you can't get out, you do medicine. And do it well. There's no excuse for mediocrity. Don't say, I failed because I didn't like it. Mm -mm. You do it, do it well. When you're done, go do something else. Find a way to do what God wants without causing trouble. Romans 12, 18, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, including your parents. Someone else? Name? Edward. Yes, Edward. Can King a pastor Edward. have a wrong motive? Can a pastor, oh yes. Can a pastor have a wrong motive? Is a pastor a human being? Is he a sinner? Yes. Don't say yes so energetically, but yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Some of the worst people in the Bible are the priests. And they will receive the worst punishment. Because to whom much is given, much is required. Yes, Edward. Are you studying theology? All right. But you go off with the right motives, my brother. Learn from the mistakes of the older and avoid them. You know, they say experience is the best teacher, but if it is somebody else's experience, don't learn from your own. Learn from somebody else. Avoid drugs by what you see it doing to somebody else. Don't do it, and then, oh, now I understand. Mm. Watch what it does to somebody else and learn from that. Someone else question? Do you study hard? Do you study hard? Sometimes. Sometimes. Listen to me. You do not have to be a genius to do well in school. You have to be disciplined. What is discipline? What's discipline? While you're thinking, let me say it again. It is not necessary to be a genius in order to do well. It is necessary to be disciplined. What is discipline? Discipline is that ability to do what has to be done regardless of what is going on around you. Years ago, Nike had a saying, you know the Nike thing? Just do it. That's discipline. That's how armies are built. You don't say, well, I'm tired today, I can't fight back. No. <laughs> armies are built on discipline. You came here to study, not to go to the mall. You came to study, not to play basketball. You came to study, not to find a husband or wife. Always remember that. And let that reason guide your choices. Discipline means I have an assignment. I don't care if the Pope visits the campus. I have an assignment. It's raining. I have an assignment. There's an earthquake. I have an assignment. <laughs> That's discipline. I just got a marriage proposal. I have an assignment. Nothing can move me off. I have an assignment. 
discipline. You have that, you'll go high and far. Proverbs 29, 29, 29, seest thou a man diligent in his business, discipline, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me men, meaning you will rise whether you are a believer or not. Unbelievers rise too. It won't be for long, but they still rise. Discipline yourself. The professor wants the paper on Monday, give it to him on Monday. He wants 10 pages, give him 10 pages. If possible, give him 11. <laughs> Discipline yourself. In other words, you control your circumstances as far as possible. If it's raining, walk through the rain. Rain never killed anybody. Discipline. Christ was disciplined. Joseph was disciplined. Daniel was disciplined. The three Hebrew boys were disciplined. What do I have to do? Do it. You live like that. You'll go high. Even good criminals are disciplined. <laughs> to succeed in crime, you must be disciplined. Another question, please, that I let you go to be disciplined. Anything else? Ask me a question. Yes. Yes. Ask me a question. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm having a struggle with my studies now because um, my weakness is um, I cannot focus on two things. I, I, I'm very focused on uh -huh. just only one thing. Okay. So the thing is that um, my my grades are high, are high, mm -hmm. but my spiritual life is going. Okay. Now we can't have that. You can't go to hell with a good degree. It doesn't make any sense. You have to find a way to reverse that, your spiritual life. And again, one way is to see your... What's your name? Farah. Who? Farah. Farah. To see your studies as a search for God, Farah. What are you studying, you said? Business. business. Abraham was a businessman. <coughs> Isaac was a businessman. Job was a businessman. You must see your studies, Farah, as a search for God. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of business. You read Proverbs <laughs> to see what the Bible says about how to run a business. Read Proverbs. Ellen White says, that which lies at the foundation of true business success is the recognition of the ownership of God. That's a business principle. Mm -hmm. God owns everything. Principle number one when you run a business is not yours. And so, Farah, search for God, and that will change the motive for why you study. If anything has to drop, let it be your grace, let your spirituality go up. Mm -hmm. You see, God can get you a high job with just average grades because He's God. Now, you must make, you can't make average effort. You must make the best effort you can. But since God gave five talents to one man, two to another, one to another, the one with five who studies five hours may do more than the one with two who studies five hours as well. But God doesn't judge you based on her. He judges you based on you. So Farah, look for God. Consciously ask the question, if you study the pricing system, where is God? If you search for God, your condition will change. And remember, the more you become clever in the Bible, the faster your brain works. You see, God is an elastic God. What do I mean by that? He says, work six days, give me one. When you do that, God takes the six days you have and he stretches it so it does more than the unbeliever who works all seven. God says, you got a hundred pesos, give me nine, give me ten. You keep the ninety and do whatever you have to do, including offering. Now God says, if you do that, I will take the ninety and stretch it. It encompasses all your needs. God is elastic. He stretches things. So when you put God first, what it took you eight hours to study, it may now take you four. God sent Gabriel to help Daniel understand. God is not a respected person. So he can do the same to you. 
but he has to be your priority as it was in the case of Daniel. Somebody else, ask a question. Somebody from Angola, ask me a question. Congo, yes, my brother. What's your question? Francis, my question is, sometimes we are struggling to combine our academic life and the religions. Mm -hmm. And Pastor said, we came here to start, no matter what, we need to do our assignment. What about if we have some assignment to do, and we have also important meeting to attend? All right. Should I speak? One of the keys to success is the management of time. What you must do, Brother Francisco, you said, yes. examine all the activities that occupy your time. You must learn to prioritize. Yes, your primary reason for coming is to study. But I said earlier, your study must be a search for God. In Luke chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, And one of the company asked him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. He wanted Jesus to do something for him. There was a conflict between him and his older brother about the inheritance. Jesus said in verse 14, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? Christ said, No, I'm not doing that. Let me say something very carefully. One of the reasons why people don't grow spiritually is because they're so busy with church work. I need to say that again before you tell the conference I'm speaking heresy. <laughs> One of the reasons pastors have nothing to say in the pulpit, they're so busy with church administration, they have no time to study the Bible. Or they take no time. Let me change my words. Listen to me, Brother Francisco. Nothing should take priority over getting to know God. That's why I keep saying, make your studies a search for God. And if a meeting is getting in the way, God understands. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty. But your study is also spiritual work. You're looking for God. And you can't do everything on campus. That's why there's a high priest, there's a Levite. They all have their work to do. When the Israelites marched, certain armies, certain tribes went ahead. When they went to battle, certain tribes went to the front. God had an organized system. But searching for God in your study is your number one priority. If you do that, God will bless you with success. Somebody else, ask a question. Let's see what time it is. Did you raise your hand, Goldie? Okay. It's uh, 9.41. I have to go to another class, I think. Any questions? Yes. Uh, in the uh, calls me to do something. What's your name? Jose. Jose. Yes. Where are you from? Angola. No. Angola. Jose. Is that uh, Portuguese? Yes. All right. Jose. What's your question? Can God, God, God calls me to do something which is different from my ability or talent? God will call you to do something that is either in line with your ability or that will force you to develop a new ability. Remember the man who had five, what did he do? He went to trade it and came up with what? Ten. So he now had five abilities he didn't have at first. When you use the ability you have, God gives you additional ones. So yes, he may challenge you. Yes. Yes, but Jose, that can happen. But God will never put you in a position where you don't have any ability at all to do what he wants. He does not do that. That's why all his biddings who can finish the quotation? Our enablings, yes. If God says jump, he puts springs in your thighs. Mm -hmm. So never be afraid. That's why you have to be sure God has called me. Then you have nothing to worry about. Someone else? Yes. Edward? Yes. All right, Dr. Edward. Can you search for God? Be uh, should your search for God be separate from your interests? Well, if your interests are not connected to your search for God, get rid of them. It is easy to be distracted, Edward. And the distraction doesn't have to be a crime. It is easy. When that young man said to Christ, come and settle the dispute between me and my brother, that wasn't a crime, but it was not what Christ came to do. So yes, you can be distracted. 
and you have to fight destruction. Stay on course. It's a tremendous ability to be able to resist destruction. Tremendous ability. But it pays dividends, my young brother. Yes, avoid distractions. All right, something else. Yes. Uh, Andrews. Andrews. Yes. Hello, Andrews. Where are you from? Ghana. Ghana. I'm going week. To uh, Valley View University. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, Andrews. Uh, Pastor, you cited Isaiah 48, 9, 10, and 11. Mm -hmm. and God's glory will not be given to another. Isaiah 42, verse 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, can a prayer that is said in God's name yes. be answered by the devil? Referring to what the enemy did in Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. What did the enemy do in Matthew chapter 4? Yes, uh, coming, being the first person to respond to mm -hmm. Christ after he fasted and prayed. Yes. Uh -huh. And he does that in a believer's life. The devil can only do what God allows him to do. Okay. Always remember that. When you are walking with God, anything that happens, God has allowed for a reason higher than the devil and higher than you. That's why I come back to my fundamental point. Is everything you're doing for the glory of God? If the answer is yes, don't worry about the devil. You're not put on this earth to worry about the devil. You're put on the earth to pursue God's glory. Jose, you make God's glory your number one concern in everything you do, including buying a barong. And you have nothing to worry about. Not the devil. The devil knows he has a short time. He's trying to take you with him. But let him go by himself. <laughs> what are you studying, Jose? Theology. Theology, all right. Remember what Edward said, have good motive. Okay. Anyone else? All right, I'm going to pray. Any prayer requests? You must have prayer requests. Who needs money? Only Goldie. Okay, all right. Okay. I'll ask God to give Goldie money and nobody else. Who needs money? Who needs whatever? Oh, oh okay. Uh, what are your prayer requests? Let me see your hands. Who is sick? You're sick. Okay, so we need healing. Whose parents are in trouble? Okay, you need to pray for them. Whose younger sister has left the church? Whose younger brother's on drugs? <laughs> Whose sister beats her husband? You know, we, we, need <laughs> we need prayer. What are your prayer requests? <laughs> Tell me. Yes, Goldie. Uh, my dad is going through dialysis. Oh, dialysis. I hate dialysis. <laughs> I have a friend in Indonesia. I pray to God every day, Lord, take him off dialysis. Ah, it's time for Christ to come and get rid of sickness, sin, death, suffering. So as you pursue your degree, don't pursue it to be more secure in this life. Pursue it to hasten the coming of Christ and get out of this world. Are you with me? Don't pursue your degree to be safe and settled in this life. Pursue your degree so you can contribute to the hastening of the coming of Christ to put an end to suffering and Zika virus and Ebola and war and civil war in Libya and refugees in Europe and typhoons in the Philippines. Aren't you sick of that? Yes, Goldie, were you finished? Yeah, um, All right. I, I Who's on dialysis again? Your, uh, on dialysis, okay. What's his name? Uh, Peter. Peter, good Bible name. <laughs> Tell Peter there's somebody praying for him. Yes, um, um, right now his body is very weak. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just don't know, you know okay. what's going to happen. But then I just pray that, um, that uh, he will wait for me to uh, we see each other again. Oh, the Lord will keep him. Okay, okay. He wants your father one more time. Fair enough. My father died. I never saw him before he died. Uh, I mean, I just found out he was dead about 16 months after he was dead. Okay. Wow. All right, may God preserve your father so you can see him. And longer than that, if it's God's will. Another prayer request. Yes. Farah, is that you? To bless your what? Bless your who? Sponsor. Sponsor. Why? So the sponsor can keep giving you? Why? Why? 
because um, uh -huh. she's now um, struggling with her uh -huh. and at the same time she's, she's looking for the money. So that's why you want God to bless your sponsor. Okay, all right. We pray, Dr. Farrer. God is very tolerant, God, you know, very tolerant. It's amazing how tolerant God is. God told uh, Lot, leave the city, run to the mountain. Lot said, let me go to that city. God said, okay. But he ended up going where God said in the first place. God is tolerant. Some other prayer request. Yes. Um, I hope that we could pray that the teachers here in AAP mm -hmm. will be able to work hand in hand with the students mm -hmm. to know more about it. To know more about God. Yeah, so basically the teachers will also, you know, integrate that in all the lessons. Well, they should. You see, here is the Adventist philosophy of education. Education, page 13, paragraph 1. We, they, we, we, they, we have too narrow a view of education. There is need for a broader scope, a higher aim. True education is more than the pursuit of a certain course of study. It means more than the preparation for the life that now is. It has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual power. Now listen carefully. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this life and for the higher joy of wider service in the life to come. For that education to be a reality, there must be cooperation between student and teacher. Because the purpose of education is salvation, not a degree. I know it sounds like blasphemy. Let me say it again. The purpose of education in the Adventist philosophy is salvation. So yes, and the most important textbook is the Bible. At every level. At every level. Councils for the Church, page uh, 289, paragraph 5, I believe it is. L. White Wright. There is no position in life. No phase of human experience for which the teaching of the Bible is not an essential preparation. Page 89, paragraph 5. No position in life, no phase of human experience for which the teaching of the Bible is not an essential preparation. It should be the most important textbook in your bag, your backpack. Along with your physics book and your engineering book and your English book. Listen to me. Being a child of God means thinking differently. So we pray for the teachers to realize they have a spiritual responsibility. They do. And God will hold them responsible if they don't carry it out. Someone else. Just pray for my sister. Your sister, what's her name? Tete. Who? Tete. Kahu? Teresa. Teresa, that's a good Catholic name. All right. What's her problem? Yes, I want her to come back to that. Oh, okay, God bless her. How old is she? Uh, Over 20? Yeah, more Okay, all right, more than that. Okay, all right. Uh, so many of our young people leave God. You grow up in the Sabbath school, then you leave God. Because you talk about the church, not about God. All right, somebody else? Any prayer requests? Yes, my dear brother. Oh, my God, yes, sir. Your family, what's wrong with them? Are they united? Yes, sir. Okay. Are they yes, godly? Uh, half of it. Okay. You want the whole family spiritually united? Following Christ? Seriously? Okay. All right. Um, Pastor, mm -hmm. I, especially my father. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, mm -hmm. he's uh, seeing the Supreme Court. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because he was a politician, mm -hmm. before, and he's still facing the effects of his past. Okay. Okay. And he has this case about mm -hmm. corruption, or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually, it's been decided he's going to prison. Right. Right. But they're filing a second motion mm -hmm. of reconsideration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is our last chance. Okay. 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 Uh, Pastor, I yes. want to ask that you pray that the judgment of God, uh -huh. not the judgment of man. Okay. For the judgment of God. What so the will of God be done in this case. 
Okay, all right. God forgives you. Or God's a forgiving God. Beginning from Lucifer when he sinned all the way down to, to us. God is a forgiving God. We'll pray. Uh, prayer request. Yes. What's wrong with him? Alcoholic. I'm sorry to hear that. Ellen White writes that Satan called a meeting of all his, his uh, chief lieutenants to figure out how to destroy humanity. Each one had to come up with a recommendation. Lucifer's recommendation was alcohol. That was Satan's idea, alcohol. And it has worked. It has worked. He said, corrupt the fruit of the vine and destroy the image of God in men. It has worked. We pray for your father. <coughs> You see, there is no satanic power God can't break. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. This is the verse you should go to bed with. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You pray that, the, that Christ will destroy what Satan is doing in your father's life. It's a, it's a verse you should fall asleep with. Father, whatever the devil tries to do while I'm sleeping, destroy it through Jesus. The devil is a destroyer, that's why he's a, a dragon. He's a deceiver, that's why he's a serpent. He's an accuser, that's why he's the devil. He's an adversary, that's why he's an adversary, the devil, accuser of Satan. He's no good. Somebody else, Perkins, Vladimir. My younger brother. What's his name? Henry. What's his problem? He's in the church, he grew up in the church. Uh -huh. but it seems like all of this is just a tradition. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You have to make your own decision for Christ. You cannot enter the kingdom based on your father's faith. You must make your personal decision to follow Christ. It doesn't work by osmosis. Someone else. Yes. Your friend. My friend. Your father. What's his problem? Rheumatism. Okay. All right. Sickness, sickness, sickness. Rheumatism. Dialysis. Alcoholism is a disease. Anything else? Yes, my brother. For my older sister. What's wrong with her? She has left the church. She left the church. Is she married? Okay. What's her name? Miriam. Miriam. That's the sister of Moses. Her name is Moses. Huh? <laughs> Her name is Moses. Oh! <laughs> All right, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll pray for Miriam. It's a serious business, you know, to leave God. Because once you leave God and you stay on that track, it's hard to come back. It's a psychological principle. You do something over and over, it's hard to undo it. You do something good over and over, it's hard to stop it. Either way, that's why we need to do the right thing until they become habits. Someone else, then I pray. Oh, yes, sister. You said you're sick. Your brother. Yeah. What's wrong with him? Um, he will be a sponsor. He's what? He will be a sponsor for God's study. Okay, okay. In the US, but mm -hmm. um, okay, he's the only boy okay. we have. Mm -hmm. And my father is not happy with him. Mm -hmm. And you know, the US is not a good country with me. Spiritual thing. Spiritual You're things. perfectly right. How old is your brother? Um, 22. Okay. Is he strong in the Lord? No, this is ah, Okay. Your father has good reason to be concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good reason. Um, What's his name you said? Pelayo. Pelayo. So we want us to pray for Pelayo that he remains strong. Yeah. Over there. Okay. All right. Okay. What's your name? Anita. Anita. Hello, Anita. Yes, Goldie. Sorry, one more thing. It's okay, don't be sorry. Um, last night, uh -huh. I, I talked to my friend. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, somehow, she she is a lesbian. Okay. But uh, when I talked to her, mm -hmm. she said that uh, she has a... This, she, she doesn't want to leave what she learned from God. I mean, like, she wants to follow everything about God mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. for that. Okay, okay. And then I said... So um, is your journey like uh, is, is your journey like there's a part where you will you will plan that you will follow everything mm -hmm. in this Except, one mm -hmm. and then she said 
I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just pray that God will intervene. But right now, this, mm -hmm. I know that this is what I am. Okay, okay. You see, Jesus came to die because of what we are. The power of the blood can heal a lesbian. The power of the cross can heal a homosexual. The power of the cross can heal an adulterer. The power of the cross can heal a fornicator. Jesus died for sin, not some sins. There is no sin the blood of Christ cannot deal with. The problem is a lack of faith. So I pray that she will decide soon. He was right. To, yeah. You see, if you follow God 99 out of 100, you're lost. I know it's harsh. You're lost. How many commandments does God want you to keep? Nine? Ten. This room has, let's call this one window, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many windows does a thief need to break to get into this room? One. And he has violated the security of the room. Are you with me? You just need to break one commandment. You violated this, the, the, the authority of God. And so if that's the only area where she's rebelling, that's all the devil needs. All Adam did was to eat a fruit. He didn't go on a crime spree. He did one thing. And look what happened. It's dangerous to hold on to one area when you know you're wrong. It's like a rust spot on your BMW. When you see it, deal with it, or your Mercedes-Benz, because it'll do what? It will spread. Someone else. Yes, my brother. What's your name? Severo. Severo? Yeah. Where are you from, Severo? Guinea. Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. Yeah. All right. What's your concern, your prayer request? What's wrong with them? They are in trouble because I can't be Because what? Because I can't be How does that put them in trouble? Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Are your name is? Severo. Severo. All right. We pray for Severo's family. God bless you for accepting Christianity. So that will remain strong. The Lord may use you to strengthen them. Remember that. Yes, Pastor. Uh, I want to special request for a very special prayer for students from Angola. Okay, okay. For the past few months, they are mm. facing some very serious economic crisis. Mm -hmm. Their parents are not able to send them even mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of them are having a very hard time, mm -hmm. but very faithful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. administration has been quite gracious. Mm -hmm. We need mm -hmm. very special prayers mm -hmm. for There are quite a few from Angola. Angola. Okay, Angola, Brethren. All right. Okay. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Haggai 2, 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. All right. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 50, verse 12. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we will pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. While I pray out loud, pray in your hearts regarding what you brought to my attention. You pray, because the most important prayer is the one you offer to God, but we must pray for each other. Never think that someone else praying for you is your success. No, pray to God yourself. He is your Father. But James 5.16 says, we must pray for each other. I will do that now. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for John 14.6. We can come to you through Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for the gift of life you've given us today. We thank you, Father, that you said in Matthew 11.28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will guarantee, give you rest. Whether the burden is financial, physical, emotional, you have promised rest. But we must come, not 99%, 100% we must come. Dear Father in heaven, if we've offended you this morning, if I've said anything I should have said, if we offended you in this presentation, forgive us and grant us your grace, dear God. Remember the requests that were brought to your attention. We have six family members. We have those who have left the church. We have a family in trouble because one became a Christian. We have some who want to connect their studies to their spiritual lives. We have a request for a sponsor to be blessed. We have those in financial need, their God. Father, in the name of Jesus who told us in John 14, verse 14, 
and 13. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, who blessed everyone who sought his help. And he says, you are just the way he is. In his name, they God, look into every individual case. Don't deal with us as a crowd, as a group. Work with us individually, dear Father, and turn around our situations. Bring those who've left you back to your bosom. Provide for those in need. Please.